Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Cantina Club. We are going to talk about the uh, wrap up of the Clone Wars. Uh, season 7 has come and gone and uh, we have the last two episodes to talk about. Uh, the last episode dropping on Star Wars Day, uh, May the 4th, last Monday. So we're going to talk about that and maybe even throw in a, a, a few other little topics of discussion there as we go. We'll see. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, we're back, and let's jump into this wrap-up of uh, basically episodes 11 and 12 of season 7 of The Clone Wars, the final episodes ever uh, of The Clone Wars. So far, I think the uh, the final story arc has gone uh, above our expectations, uh, and Definitely. I had very high expectations, so I'm very pleasantly surprised that it's actually been even better than I hoped it would be. Uh, all four episodes, I think, lived up to to those expectations, and it's just been phenomenal. It's been a great ride. Um, so, first of all, uh, Greedo, go ahead and give me your uh, your initial take on uh, on these uh, last couple of episodes. Okay, the last couple of episodes. Um... The final episode, it's hard for me to I kind of watched them all at once, so it's hard for me to differentiate because it's it's like one movie, you know. It really is, yeah. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to take it as well. But I, I remember the next last episode ended with uh Rex coming back to himself after the operation and right. so that, that whole episode was the was shattered was was the order sixty sixty six implementation. Mm -hmm. Um that was great. Uh Again, my only critique I'll get out of the way was that Ahsoka may have been a little superhero-ish mm -hmm. because she was surrounded on all sides. <laughs> and uh, the one scene where Rex was double blasting from mm -hmm. one side of her and all the clones were on the other side of her blasting, I was like, how are they not hitting each other? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, why would, why would Rex just open up with all of his guys standing right behind her? Right, but uh, right. <laughs> but uh, other than that, um, it was a lot of fun, but dark. I like the dark stuff. And of course that carried over into the next one. Um, I was real impressed with uh, the, you know, you remember how I said the facial animation took a minute to grow on me, the mm -hmm. change they've done in that, in the new stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm on board now. I thought it was really well done. It just seemed much more in place and natural to me. Now I, I preferred it. Some of the hero shots of Ahsoka where she got close ups, especially at the end of the episode when they were coming through the door, Mm -hmm. really well done yeah and, um very much so yeah but overall uh these two episodes were action-packed uh a little over the top with the action maybe but the animation was spectacular the um the stakes were high and we finally i got a lot of answers that i wanted and mm -hmm. um but also with very entertaining episodes that and the tone was very much revenge of the sith very dark and uh yeah, we'll get to the ending, but it had a, just a wonderful ending, I thought. Uh, overall, just really fantastic. I couldn't yeah. have asked for too much more, I don't think. Yeah, no, I, I completely echo that. Uh, I was just blown away uh, with how they wrapped everything up as, as you know, obviously... I, we all know I'm a massive, you know, Clone Wars fanboy here. Uh, and I love the show. I've loved it from day one. And, um, but to wrap it up in such a emotional and impactful way I thought was just amazing. I, they mm -hmm. couldn't have done it any better. I couldn't have asked for any more because obviously, you know, it couldn't have ended on any other note, but a down note, to be honest, considering the situation within the universe at the time, this is the birth of the empire and, and Anakin, you know, turns into Darth Vader and, you know, everything we know about the Jedi order is now gone and etc. So mm -hmm. to end it in such an ominous way was just phenomenal i just i literally had goosebumps watching that final scene yes. um and to end it that way i thought was just a way to really really make it just brought it home just how intense that, that storyline is at that point um so yeah overall uh i think yeah i agree with you that it was it was action heavy but i didn't think it was necessarily too over the top um i thought it was pretty pretty good for the storyline that we needed um and <laughs> just that interaction with rex and now we understand why rex said that he didn't you know uh he didn't follow through on order 66 you know now we've actually got that story we got that reference that he made in in rebels right uh, 
to that. And now we actually see the story uh, explained as to how and why he didn't uh, give in to what the chip was programming, programming him to do. So uh, yeah, so overall, I have zero complaints about this episode on or these last two episodes and the whole story arc for that matter. I uh, really enjoyed it thoroughly uh i i enjoyed the the final episode so much i watched it back to back without yeah literally immediately when it was over i went right back to <laughs> play again and watched it a second time yeah it was so good i think um, you could watch the, the all four of them together it, and, you know it, and it's, it's interesting to, awesome. yeah, no that's, that's that's absolutely true so in a lot of ways if you think about it clone Wars started with a movie and it ended with a movie mm-hmm. you know because they started with the theatrical release and these last four episodes are basically the same thing you know, it's it's basically an uh, hour and a half movie if you put a, if you put all four parts together uh, as telling one one quick story. But uh, yeah, it was phenomenal. All right, so those are the initial thoughts. So let's get into a little bit more of the guts of the uh, the episode here. Um, uh, I did like okay, obviously one of the things I think we've talked about uh, that we have enjoyed about the story arc is is its parallels to. Um, Revenge of the Sith and and it's direct tie in with what's happening in the story we already know versus what you know what this new story is telling us mm-hmm. uh, that continued obviously with uh, with the enactment of, of order 66 uh, which we see in Revenge of the Sith now we see what happens where Ahsoka is um, you know on the return uh, back to Coruscant from uh, from Mandalore after the siege of Mandalore has ended uh, they're on the Jedi cruiser the, the episode shattered basically starts with showing Maul being incarcerated uh, they've actually got him in this massive uh, box <laughs> where he literally will not have any hope of escape, uh, which I thought was really interesting how they, uh, how they had him in there yeah. like that. It was really ominous. Obviously like, like a, a Mandalorian artifact. Um, yeah. They even referred to it as that. Of, I think they, they said that they tried to get rid of them at one point. And that was like yeah. the last remaining one or something. There was a lot of imagery on the front uh, mm-hmm. of the like sarcophagus or whatever prison cube whatever right. it was yeah it exactly. kind of implied a lot of things about the jedi and the mandalorians i think and their conflict yeah. in the past exactly and intriguing stuff mm-hmm. um so yeah uh to, to touch on your point about um Ahsoka being a little superhero-ish. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. You know, it got, it got a little bit uh, like that, but um, I think they made up for it in episode 12, uh, Victory and Death, uh, because ultimately, you know, when she's taking on a whole battalion, basically, of, of clone troopers, she does get wounded, um, and she does take a few hits, you know. So, you know, yeah. they, I think they, they kind of answered that, you know, without, you know, uh, realistically. Um, in, in episode and 12. to be fair, uh, Maul was super powered as well. Oh yeah, which yeah, of course. kind and of made that. sense in a way because he said the dark side's never been more powerful, and maybe he was right. tapping into that. But he was ripping bulkheads, you know, like the the wall mm. panels off, right. and, and just all kinds of crazy stuff. Which can we touch on that for a second? The just of brutality course. in that episode shattered. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was kind of. Ahsoka was trying to walk this line of not killing the clones, even though they were out to kill her, mm-hmm. but figure out what to do next. And she released Maul and she told him, I'm not rooting for you and I'm not going to partner with right. you. You're, You're a, a distraction. Yeah. Well, he was one hell of a distraction. And uh, the scenes they had with him against the clones were so brutal where he's using those panels as a weapon with the force throwing them and decapitating guys and stuff right. oh my god <laughs> you know <laughs> it really doesn't get much darker in clone wars than that i don't think i know so. right <laughs> and uh anyway of course i loved that so, Absolutely. But, he was, but, but to be fair to, but to, to be clone. fair the force users against the clones the force users were overpowered you know and the clones right seemed to have one trick which was just blast them as fast as they could Mm. Um, which we yeah. saw in the last episode or the episode before that, where they captured them all, where was the cool, you know, like capture devices and everything. Yeah. And it seemed to work so good before they just <laughs> yeah. resorted to just blast them as fast as you can, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which obviously wasn't working. You'd better off just trying to tackle right. them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and of course, you know, ultimately the, uh, the episode ends with um, Ahsoka, you know, finding the chip, in Rex's head, uh, getting that out so that he comes back to his normal self, uh, mm-hmm. doesn't obey the programming to, to kill her. Um, but the cliffhanger ending, of course, is them in this small little room uh, with, meanwhile, the clones that have been programmed are burning their way through the door. 
and that's yeah. literally as as we go to to credit. That was a great cliffhanger, wasn't uh, it? Yeah, it really was. Yeah, it was <laughs> phenomenal. It's a really interesting way to yeah. end it. And 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 it's and 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 then episode twelve immediately picks up at that point. The first thing you see is them standing in the room, <laughs> and then the <laughs> the guys burning through the door. Literally, it's like you know the scene just they just stopped in the middle and immediately restarted it. Um, so uh, so yeah, I did like uh, the way she started that whole escape from the room. I thought that was really well done and with the way she waited until they got right to the very end. And then she immediately force pushed the door open, you know, to, yeah. uh, to create that distraction that blew several of them away. And then, you know, the others are startled enough to, for them to gain the element of surprise. Uh, and how awesome kind of was, uh, was Rex and Ahsoka back to back working yeah. together? Like she would, she would be deflecting the bolts and he would be firing and he's firing around stun, her body stun bolts yeah. Yeah, around <laughs> that, yeah exactly around her yeah that, they were like a well oiled machine it was really cool <laughs> yeah that was excellent that was fantastic um and then of course we've got uh, you know they they eventually get away to the uh, the control room uh, where they're trying to get on a ship because at this point uh, maul has meanwhile gone to the reactor room basically and destroyed the entire hyperdrive system uh and the the ship is basically <laughs> floating helplessly towards a, a moon that it's going to uh, crash into. Uh, and there's really no way to divert it from that. So they eventually learn that. Speaking of overpowered to... mall. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> very all those reactors together. That was super overpowered. Yeah. Like, I mean, if, if Luke, you know, is going to disappear <laughs> in The Last Jedi from from straining too hard or whatever he yeah. was doing. Uh, I think Maul should have <laughs> burst into yeah. flames there when he right. did that. <laughs> that should have been the last supreme effort he was capable of. <laughs> Very, true. Yeah, Very true. But but hey, you know, like I said. Yeah, it was still entertaining. Different thing. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So uh, so when, when Rex and Ahsoka get to the control room, they learn what happened to the hyperdrive thanks to the these droids they have. Um, and then they, they come up with a plan. They realize they have to get to a ship to get off of there because that's the only, the only way out. Um, but in so doing, they open up the, uh, the cargo bay doors and all of a sudden out marches an entire platoon of, uh, of, uh, clone troopers who are standing there waiting to take them down. Um, so they come up with another plan uh, that uh, is not yet revealed. Uh, she gets these three droids in on these three R2 units uh, in on this plan. And then they, they basically march themselves down to the uh, docking bay area where the, where the clone troopers are. They started out by um, uh, Rex pretending like he's got uh, Ahsoka captured uh, and they try and divert uh, Jesse, the the commander of the uh, the platoon that's down there, uh, right. into thinking, okay, you know, I, I'm on your side still. I've got her. But then he tries to bargain with him and say, look, we're 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 committing treason if we kill Ahsoka because she's not a Jedi and hasn't been for some time. We're only supposed to kill the Jedi. She's not a Jedi. Right. Uh, but of course, Jesse doesn't ultimately doesn't buy it, and um and they're they're, they're they they start to attack them. Any and thoughts he accuses about- Rex of treason there, <laughs> and yeah, that right. was pretty cold. Uh, the yeah, my thoughts on this were, um, again, it, it's a brutal tone and a dark tone because it's just like in Revenge of the Sith when Sidious flips that switch, and uh, Commander Cody says, "Open fire on Obi Wan," and he just yeah. gave him his saber back <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> two seconds ago. Yeah, <laughs> and you found something you might want, sir. You know, and then two seconds later, he's trying to murder him. Yeah. So uh, it had that kind of uh, confusion of friends are now enemies and there's nothing you can do. Uh, I, di- I, I did love the moment where Rex said, let me do this when he was going to execute Ahsoka at the very, when she first figured out something was going on, he kind of fought for a minute and his helmet fell on the deck, which was a great kind of symbol for um, he's fighting. There's two sides of Rex. There's the, mm-hmm the human side and there's the the soldier side that's been programmed which the helmet laying on the deck is there's a conflict between Mm -hmm. those two at the end of that scene he picks up the helmet and puts it back on and he's committed to killing her at that point until you know they take the helmet off and do the surgery on him but um the fact that they so quickly turned on their commander, you know, who had just given them the orders to follow order 66 <laughs> shows you how strong the programming was that they, right. they're basically can't resist it at all. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
and this is just another thing really isn't it to blame the jedi for <laughs> because didn't they have back with the fives arc they had warning that something was going on mm -hmm. and it was going to be pretty darn important and it seems like they really have dropped the ball in the interim and didn't figure out they accepted all the glossed over explanations that the clone um uh creators gave them and all that Mm -hmm. and 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 didn't investigate it further evidently which was you know colossal mistake so uh, the <laughs> jedi know. again taking their hits here exactly. not looking so yeah. great Very true. but uh but yeah um i i really loved rex trying to use that and it and it f didn't work at all um the droids were a nice touch and you being more familiar with clone wars i know i recognized the one that kind of sounded like chopper a little bit that kind of mm -hmm. did the almost human vocalization mm -hmm. And I think I'd seen the others before. Do you know are are those droids? No, they they didn't seem that familiar to me. I think they oh, were okay. just they were just you know random droids for that particular episode. Although I I do know what you're talking about the one that sounded like Chopper. I yeah. think we just know him because he's been in the story arc. Oh, okay. The main thing. I, 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 I don't recall him at all stuff. from from previously in in Clone Wars at all. Okay, I so. thought maybe in in the ship they would have had the droids that they'd used before. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Um, but while we're talking about the droids, yeah. <laughs> they were very useful. Uh, they kind of differentiated themselves as characters, even though they're droids in a brief period of time. And then their deaths, if you want to call it that, their deactivations were extremely violent and dark. Again. Yeah. And yes. uh, yeah. And again, it showed you the, the just sudden break from everything we know because they, because the, uh, the clone troopers are sick of the droids and they say, dirty droids, mm -hmm. and they just blow them away. Just blast them at point blank range. That so was, there's animosity I mean, there. They like hate them all of a sudden. And that's the you thing, know? too, that gets me. That, that scene, that's kind of part of what I love about Clone Wars. They're not afraid to take those kind of chances. No, you know, they'll they go close to those the dark book places. when they want to close the book. Yeah. Now, now, obviously, this was not like killing younglings, but yeah. it, I mean, it's droids. I get it, but that was dark. That you was know, the way that was done. Dark. You know, that they would traumatize a kid. Just looking over the droids. top and they said, "You dirty droids!" <laughs> and just started blasting them. Point blank, blank range. Man. It was just brutal. <laughs> They're like. Ah! Yeah, you could hear the droids screaming. <laughs> and they held up their it. little arms, too. <laughs> they were like, don't shoot. Yeah, that was, that was cold. <laughs> that was very <laughs> cold. It was, it was one of my favorite moments, but it happened so fast, I was, I was shocked. I was like, mm -hmm. that just really happened? Yeah, I know. Oh. I did, too. Yeah, the first time it happened, like, whoa, they just did that. <laughs> yeah. But at least the clones finally hit something <laughs> on the bright side. <laughs> they're yeah. the deadliest warriors in the universe until they're up against a protagonist. Exactly. The broad side of a barn. We're, <laughs> we're seeing the Imperial Stormtroopers start to creep in. That's one of the things I wanted to mention, too, mm -hmm. was on this ship, the officers and the corridors and stuff suddenly looked extremely Imperial, didn't they? Uh, yeah, but they've looked that way for a while. Have I mean, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you know, they, uh, obviously as they've gone on, they start to look more and more Imperial, but they've always had that. Like those Jedi cruisers that they're on, for instance, those are obviously the precursors to, you know, Star Destroyers. Yeah. And, um, and, and a lot of the bridge mechanics and the layout is all the same, you know, with kind of the, the uh, uh, you know, recessed pits where the mm -hmm. you know, the crew works where the officers are up top looking out the big windows you know that's the same on the jedi well, cruisers what i noticed was the corridors mm -hmm. looked very much like the death star right with they the, had the, the sort of the, the side lights, lights the yeah elliptical lights and mm -hmm. then the um the officers seemed much more dark and imperial unit straight imperial uniforms they still had more of a zigzag on the front but mm -hmm. again uh I'm not as big a Clone War aficionado. I kind of let that stuff mm -hmm. slide by without taking notes on it when I watch it. But it struck me that there was a lot of emphasis on the Imperial looking, you know, design and, and, and atmosphere yeah. in these episodes. Like yeah. there's going to be a seamless transition. I, I think almost. they made the effort to make it a little bit more obvious this, this past yeah. season, just because we are timeline wise getting closer to the birth of the empire but yeah it's, it's always been there from season one you know, yeah always and the, and had the sad part those, is, those same uniforms those same everything the sad part is the jedi aren't the only ones that aren't going to make it through this transition right the clones themselves are mm -hmm. over they're done yep uh and we see that happen in this episode maybe not the totality of it but we get an example of it which was mm -hmm. frankly kind of chilling i thought yeah, i agree um because uh, these clones are just are, are soldiers. They don't 
really even know the war is coming to an end or that they're part of it's coming to an end. And there's a couple of discussions where uh, it's emphasized that they're soldiers and without the war, they wouldn't exist, Mm -hmm. but they want something more. But unfortunately they're not only a few of them are going to get it. Most of them are going to, their destiny is to end with the war and end in a very bad way. And in the, in the final wrap up scenes, we see stormtroopers in Clone Wars, I think probably for the first Mm -hmm. time, there's there's no sign of the clones anywhere or the clone Mm -hmm. armor. And so the Imperial iconography is totally taken over. You yeah. know, the Republic, anything right. to do with the Republic has been changed over to this, you know, Imperial imagery and everything. And all we have left of the clones is bits of their armor mm-hmm. <laughs> at the end. <laughs> um, but anyway, I didn't totally mean to skip ahead, but... No, not at all. Um, so, so ultimately the plan uh, is that the... Um, the droids have um, basically made the the floor drop out from the clones. In other words, uh, kind of like right. we get a lot of we've seen in 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 the Death Star and Imperial Star Destroyers in these docking bays. They have these levitate not levitating but you know recessed you know floor grids that go down, uh, and they've basically pulled that out. So that kind of takes out half the clone troopers right there, gets them out of the line of fire, so they don't have to take on the entire battalion at once. Um, so they fight. Well, what they're trying to do is ultimately get to the ship that the droids are prepping, but me. Meanwhile, Darth Maul goes behind them and gets in the ship, you know, while they're preoccupied with the clone troopers. Um, uh, Meanwhile, uh, Ahsoka does try to stop him by using the force, tries to pull the ship back. uh, But ultimately, she has to give that up because uh, Rex can't take on, you know, all the clone troopers that are attacking at one time. And she needs her to, or he needs her to help him. So she has to ultimately let Maul, Maul go. And that ultimately is the last we see of Maul in the Clone Wars. Uh, his, his ship takes off and then he jumps into hyperspace. And that's, uh, the, that's all we see of Maul until, uh, until Rebels. Um, so yeah, so basically that's roughly the last we see of Maul for I guess about 15, 16 years. <laughs> because I think about that, that's roughly the time passage between the end of Clone Wars at that point to where we see uh, all the action in Rebels. You know, technically, wouldn't, wouldn't Maul and Solo be before Rebels? Actually, you're right. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, that, that little cameo we had in Solo would be before that. So that'd probably be about more like 12 years later. So he was, so. I forget the name of the syndicate, but that he was ahead of in, in Solo. But we right. can assume he became went back to being a crime boss. Um, right, exactly. And did the whole thing where they went in and slaughtered the people who <laughs> who wouldn't cooperate or whatever. All the stories right. from Solo. And uh, right. Crimson Dawn is the name Crimson of the Dawn. Right. Right. Um, so okay, so we so we're done with Maul. Maul's gone. Um, uh, ultimately, uh, then from that point, uh, Ahsoka and Rex finally find one final functioning Y wing. Um, they uh, take damage. They get hit a couple times, but they do manage to get there. Um, and just as Ahsoka, uh, uh, Rex is in there powering up the ship, and just about right as Ahsoka makes the jump to get there, the uh, the the Jedi cruiser takes a takes a jolt as it starts entering the atmosphere of this planet, and the uh, the Y wing is thrust out of the uh, the docking bay. Um, so she's basically free falling at this point, and then um, after a couple of missed <laughs> missed attempts, another she action is able, scene, yeah. another you know pretty amazing action action scene, not uh, entirely different from uh, the one when she landed on the uh, the platform in Mandalore <laughs> with her right. kind of running across ship to ship you know she was kind of running across debris at this point and again um, very reminiscent of the prequels and the prequel style of action very much so yeah. Jedi yeah it definitely yeah. had very much prequel Jedi action to it mm-hmm. so um so she ultimately gets aboard um and they're safe and then we get to one of what I thought was one of the most I don't know why, but it was one of the most breathtaking shots in all of Clone Wars was that shot of the Jedi cruiser kind of going down sideways through the clouds. And you just see the smoke, the plume of smoke coming out as it just slowly descended to its final resting place. And they're watching it. They Mm -hmm. like see it happening. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was really, really well done and chilling to watch. Uh, And then we kind of fast forward a little bit to uh, the, the ship is down. All the clones are dead. Of course, anybody that was aboard that ship is dead now. Um, And then the Y wing is parked there. Ahsoka goes up to, um, is looking at uh, this graveyard now that uh, she and, uh, and Rex have, taken the time you know which i thought was also a kind of a moving thing that they took the time to bury all of these clone troopers who had just tried to kill them 
Mm-hmm. And, um, and I thought that was really, really well done. It was a nice touching moment. Um, so, so this is basically the last we see of, of Ahsoka at this point. Uh, we see her standing there sort of lamenting the, the passing of, of, of everything, of, of the Clone Wars, of, of these clones that she knew as, as brothers. Uh, and then she ends up actually taking one of her lightsabers and just dropping it on the ground there and leaving it. Uh, and then she just walks away. And that's the last uh, we see of her. So what is your take on sort of how that came across? Wow, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, It really was. Because uh, so few scenes have so much uh, coming through in them. And, the, and when you... <laughs> Uh, the more you think about that scene, the more different meanings you can take from it. And the, um, you know, the more you look at each character's perspective, you look at the uh, Ahsoka's perspective, what she's looking at, the, the, the labor they just went through to show the respect to these, these soldiers and leave a little monument to them, you know? Um, yeah. And then it's also closing the book finally on her being a Jedi with leaving a a lightsaber behind. She's still keeping one, but this is kind of symbolically closing the book, leaving the Jedi legacy behind the Jedi are over. And Mm -hmm. to hold on to that means you're going to be hunted down and killed. So uh, plus she no longer really agrees with it. Um, Also, you know, the clone wars are over the Republic's over the cruisers destroyed. Um, And, it was sad, obviously, because you have these helmets all lined up. Um, these are the victims, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. These are the victims, Absolutely. Um, and the, I think the the conflict that killed them between these characters, the conflict that erupted between these characters, is forgotten. Then it's about who they were up to this point. You know that um, they were pawns ultimately. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and and they didn't have the choice or the ability to resist that final order 66 command, which ended up resulting in this whole disaster. But um, you memorialize them for who they were before that. And it's incredibly sad that their individuality in a way, their individuality is really honored here by each of their helmets, even though um, there's uniformity there always, Mm -hmm. you just get the idea with the different face paintings, different, uh, and Jesse's helmet and everything like that, it, it strikes you that they were individuals again, yeah. you know, which has been the whole theme of this really. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they were caught in the same trap that everyone else was. And, right. Uh, they had, they were powerless against it. Yeah. So, uh, Absolutely. Um, yeah. And you, you see Ahsoka closing the book on being a Jedi. She's also faking her own death at this point as well by leaving her saber behind. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe sending a message, you know, who knows what she knows at this point, but she might be leaving that there as a calling as card, a, knowing yeah. who's going to find it. Right. Um, and uh, Rex is also, those are his men, you know, Th- those, that's his command. They're all Absolutely. decimated and gone. So he's devastated uh, by that. Yeah, yeah. He's closing the book on it, but he's mm-hmm. also survived because of Ahsoka having his back basically. And, right. um, and, and, you know, they took care of each other for this situation, yeah. but um, yeah, it, all those things together and the, and the, it looked like artwork to me, you know I mean? It was a beautiful, uh, beautifully rendered. Yeah. Theme. Well, that's, I mean, a lot of Clone Wars is like that. It is. And, yeah. um, it's, you know, even from season one, I actually, I, I, I know I still have it, but there's uh, one of the, you know, obviously we know the whole series of the art of Star Wars books for mm-hmm. each film and things like that. Well, they actually had one for season one of Clone Wars and, and it shows like the original paintings and things like that done for the episodes. And it's just amazing the, the amount of work they put into those things. So that's one of the things that the aesthetics of the show is another thing that always kind of pulled me in uh, is just the look and feel of it. They, they just went that, you know, it's just an animated show. They don't have to do this stuff, you know, but they went the extra mile and they made it so realistic uh, that it, you know, kind of like to, you know, the ultimate, I think evolution of that is like you pointed out a couple of our last episode when we talked about um, episode 10, how cinematic it looked with the duel between, Mm-hmm. Ahsoka and Darth Maul, you know, they, they take that extra effort uh, mm-hmm. to make it look like that and they pulled it off, you know? So yeah, you know, you saying it looked like a painting, that's perfect. Cause that's exactly yeah. what it looks like. And, and also uh, one thing I want to say, I don't interrupt you, but I love the simplicity of it. 
because this is it. This is the final mm -hmm. few minutes of Clone Wars, however many years it's been, all this effort and everything. Yeah. The inclination would be to go over the top with it. But yeah. they've done that through these four episodes with the combat and everything. And this mm -hmm. is like a moment of reflection. Um, it mirrors the end of the seven samurai mm -hmm. where there's, I think there's two or maybe three of the seven samurai left and they're looking at the swords stuck in mm -hmm. the, the mounds at the end and they're going to, you know, carry on <laughs> right. for those guys, but right. their, but their era is over. Um, mm -hmm. they, you know, the gun, guns are now coming in and, you know, you can't fight a gun with a sword. Right. So exactly. um, there's a lot of that melancholy there. Uh, but I love the simplicity of it because the temptation must have been there to just get one more, you know, thing in, one more yeah. image in, one more. But it's just beautifully laid out. It's it's a it's a wonderful spot to stop, and they didn't overdo it. Yeah. And and yeah. Uh, we, uh, maybe we should talk about the final final shot. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Now now that we've gotten to that point, so <laughs> right. after after Ahsoka drops the lightsaber. Um, we see it basically this the, the camera as it were sort of pans up. What's that? I said, Oh this yeah, right guy here. <laughs> yeah, that guy there. <laughs> um, so the camera sort of pans up um, to the sky. And then obviously we've got another time passage. We have no idea how much time has gone by at this point. I'm assuming it's a, a, a bit of a time uh, because of something that, that we see in a minute, but we pan up to see an Imperial shuttle lowering. Uh, and that's when, like you, would, like like Greta, you referred to earlier. Yeah, we get the first appearance of Imperial stormtroopers mm -hmm. in Clone Wars. Uh, and like you said, all the the clone iconography is gone now. It's it's Imperial. Yeah, we see. I, I found that a little droids. shocking. Yeah, yeah. I didn't expect it at all. I, I didn't either. No, that was that came out of left field. Yeah. But yeah, we've got uh, Imperial. Well, basically, snow troopers. We've got uh, stormtroopers. We've got probe droids, and then of course, getting off the shuttle we see Darth Vader um, and he walks over and, uh, and I know you noticed this, but what was the one key thing that, that this shows you the detail that they pay attention to? What was the one thing they added to Vader to make it more, even more accurate? Well, <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure, but I did notice that his helmet was, from a new hope you know right. well that, yeah the red the red lenses the, the red lenses and kind yeah. of the not perfectly um, right they're not perfectly aligned yeah, yeah not, not perfectly, perfectly symmetrical yeah symmetrical yeah, yeah exactly. and the more brutal lines and the kind of chip but uh i'm not sure it was probably something to do with his chest plate or something like that but uh but i don't know i didn't i missed it no no i was talking about the red lenses that was oh, the, the red lenses yeah, okay there you go the red lenses because yeah. he only ever had that in in a new hope so i thought that was kind of cool that they kept that continuity in there um there they are right there yeah, there you go. <laughs> and from that angle, it almost looks like you can see his eyes through there. <laughs> yeah, which you could in a lot of the, when the lighting yeah, was right in, in the movies. Right it's in a, the movies. It's a very nice touch. Even, yeah. even better. It but, also uh, is reminiscent of when he loses half the mask in Rebels and you see mm -hmm. his tortured yeah, eye. Yeah, you can there. see, yeah, you can see the tortured eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so okay, so to wrap up that scene and the, the entire series at this point, uh, we see Vader walk over to the same spot roughly where Ahsoka was standing uh, in the previous scene. Um, and, and time has passed because, you know, the, the, a lot of the things that were standing up at the helmets have fallen over. Um, there's just, you know, some laying on the ground. Uh, he's just kind of standing there taking it all in. And then he, he looks down and he picks up our lightsaber. And, and another thing that shows time has passed is that the lightsaber actually looks a little rusted at this point. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, this doesn't look like it's a week later, you know, <laughs> so some time has passed. Um, but basically he just, obviously you can imagine at this point, he knows it's, it's Ahsoka's lightsaber. Um, and he, he basically fastens it to his own belt. Um, thinks for a minute, you can see him pondering things and he turns and walks away. And then the final shot we get from the Clone Wars is so freaking chilling. <laughs> it's just, it's just that that clone helmet uh kind of sitting askew in the snow um yeah that shot behind greedo there and you see uh, the reflection of vader walking away and it slowly fades to where you can't see him anymore and then it fades to the credits so and just, with like wow music just just like the sound of wind blowing it's just so and yes goosebumps <laughs> just yeah, talking about big time. <laughs> yeah that was so well done so Thank you, Dave Filoni. That was phenomenal. You did such an amazing job on that. I did want to bring up something, too. Uh, what was the circling bird? Um, I don't know that there was any significance to that. 
honestly. If, if there was, I missed it. I thought I, I, I kept looking at it going, yeah, it just looks like some sort of bird. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't, didn't get any, but it seemed like they were the way they were focusing on it. Like this means something, you know, but well, they use animals all the time, like in yeah. rebels with the wolves and right. the little critters well, yeah, but, that were jumping But a lot around. less so in clone wars, a lot less. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big thing in rebels. Not, not so much in clone wars. And I almost thought it was a, a symbol of he looks up and it's something that he's no longer connected to, mm-hmm. you know, nature, be, uh, be, this yeah. thing flying, circling. Um, it's free, but it's also circling. Uh, it could be like a spirit type animal, mm-hmm. like Ahsoka's, you know, moved on into whatever. I, I took right. it as kind of confirmation that he thinks she's dead at this point. Right. Um, because he finds her saber, which she left for. I also thought it was very interesting, which I, I messaged you about. <clears throat> and this is where we got into trouble because you hadn't seen the episode yet. Which I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, th- that's the moment where I, th- I, it clicked with me that the initial title of this little mini movie was Old Friends Not Forgotten. Mm-hmm. And I always, I wondered when I watched the first episode, uh, they did bring a lot of the characters together and we're like, wow, we're seeing old friends, you know, they're not forgotten because Clone Wars has been revived and, and the fans stuck with it and brought it back. Yeah. I mean, that's what I love about this stuff. There's so many meanings. You can take <laughs> yeah. the meaning from it wherever it's you want. It's multiple meanings. But, it just but when I got thing. to that final scene, I was like, that's Anakin. You know, Anakin mm-hmm. is holding Ahsoka's saber. He's looking at the buried, half-buried uh, clones' helmets and knowing their mm-hmm. bodies are there. He's got the... Re- Old Republic cruiser, cruiser destroyed. Yep. And it's old friends, you know, yep. and he hasn't forgotten That's uh, exactly as it. much as, as much as he would like to have a completely different identity and everything. And he's Darth Vader. Anakin's dead. Anakin's mm-hmm. not dead. You know, Anakin's right. in there. Right. And, he is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And that was, uh, that's that was incredibly pickup. sad. I thought to see, mm-hmm. uh, and it also for me brought to fruition what I asked for when we did our first review of this, of the first episode where I said, mm-hmm. um, this doesn't feel like Anakin transitioning into Vader to me. It feels like Clone Wars Anakin on full display, but I don't see the connection. Well, that one scene for me was enough mm-hmm. to say, okay, there's the hero of the Clone Wars and look what it did to him, you know? Right. And, and it was just incredibly sad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. His whole life is laid out there dead mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know there's no going back uh it's all over yeah. and there's there's only you know the more machine now than man <laughs> yeah. and the and, no, and absolutely ruling. right yeah very very well said yeah so, they won yeah. but they lost <laughs> everybody lost <laughs> mm-hmm. show me exactly. the winner of the clone wars there yeah there one. was not one <laughs> Sidious, that's it <laughs> that's it yeah pal's gonna say palpatine that's probably the only one yeah the one who orchestrated it from what the beginning. A, you know, what a brutal message and imagery for a, you know, what started as a kid show. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, but you can take what you want from it. You don't have to think about all that stuff if you don't want to. Yeah. But it's there. And they didn't just hit you over the head with it. It was, it was a few seconds. It, it, there wasn't any dialogue. It was just really, really well done. And just incredible. Yeah. One of yeah. my favorite moments, if not my favorite moment uh, from the show. So. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, that was that was phenomenal. Just a, and, and I couldn't have asked for a better ending to the series. Uh, I knew Filoni wouldn't disappoint, and he didn't. It was it was tremendous. Yeah, so bravo, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, so, you have any uh, any final thoughts on uh, on uh, season seven of the Clone Wars at this point? Uh, yeah, um, cut the filler, and it would be one of the best seasons ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the middle four episodes <laughs> yeah and it's it's strange that we only had 12 but but four need to go um right <laughs> i mean they're they're okay they're there yeah. if you ever want to watch them but i sure. don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> when they're sure. sandwiched between this you know two doses of magnificence <laughs> like right. we got exactly uh, um, but you know what that's a minor gripe uh i'm somebody that like if my favorite band comes out with an album and there's two good songs on there, I'm happy mm-hmm. <laughs> because yeah. people criticize them. They should have quit. You know, but it's like, I wouldn't have got those two songs to add to their catalog. You know, exactly. and maybe later I'll discover, discover more I like. Mm-hmm. Um, so to me, the whole thing was worth it for the bad batch. And then this, the old friends, not forgotten movie, uh, way, way worth it. I mean, there's no yeah. question in my mind. So right. I don't have to watch those other episodes again if I don't want to. And I've still got these. Yeah, exactly. You know, to savor. So, uh, right. 
Yeah, to me, it's an incredible success. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, when you consider that we could have had uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan rematch number seven, you know, they could have thrown in stuff, <laughs> you know, twisted cannon around to say, yeah. <laughs> you know, we could have we could have had Vader, all this, we could have had some crazy uh, Samuel L. Jackson could have come, you know, Mace Windu could have come back. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I mean? They could have gone just nuts if they wanted to and just jump the shark. But exactly. Um, but they instead, didn't. they went all out within a contained story mm-hmm. to show us some over the top action, but the story was not over the top. And then we right. got a beautiful, beautiful conclusion that was working. Yeah. And, everything and, and the, the way they, the way they, basically intertwined it with the actual movie revenge of the sith as well was fantastic you know that was more than i could have asked for and they uh they didn't need to address padme in this they didn't need to address luke and leia in this that stuff is for the movie you know exactly they didn't need to go back to obi-wan one more time because Mm -hmm. he is the star of revenge of the sith basically right one of them they didn't really need to go back to sidious again um this was for the characters that didn't have that closure Mm-hmm. And their relationship, Anakin's relationship to Ahsoka and Rex and the clones and their relationship to each other. And that's what they focused on. And it was an awesome decision, you know, to stay right. there and, yeah, it was and not incredible. get all crazy all over the place. So. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, yeah, I got to say, I mean, I'm sad to see the, you know, one of my favorite shows of all time come to an end, but I couldn't have asked for a better ending. Uh, and the best part is now we can go back and watch, uh, watch it as many times as we want. In <laughs> fact, I'm so happy with uh, the way things have gone in season seven. I have gone back to do another rewatch <laughs> and I'm already about uh, 17 episodes through episodes through season one again. <laughs> so That's great. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really love that. So I have a feeling we're going to have a little bit more Clone Wars content coming Coming up, um, I've been watching. Greedo's uh, alluded to it before. We've talked about maybe doing a uh, just a Clone Wars episode where we talk about some of our favorite story arcs and favorite yeah, characters. We have to do that. Things it's like that. Time. So I definitely, definitely am game for that. It's time, and uh, yeah, I've been watching Better Call Saul. So <laughs> I've been in the opposite end of the spectrum from yeah, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great show. But uh, the last thing uh, we would be remiss if we didn't mention. Uh, I, I want. I we kind of. I forgot when we were in the part where I should have mentioned it, but I love the scene. Another outstanding scene. It's one of my favorites from the show that I can remember was when Rex, when Ahsoka took Rex's helmet off. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, and yes. the tear was running down his face. That was amazing. I yeah. love that scene. Thank Again. you for I, 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 that. That scene escaped me when we talked about it. You're right. That was a yeah. really moving. Oh movie. man, it was incredible. And the, yeah. the voice actor who does Rex did such a great job because mm-hmm. Rex doesn't know how to handle this stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, he is a hundred percent soldier. Um, the clones are only in different times beginning to discover mm-hmm. their individuality and if they can have normal lives and emotions and all that stuff. So that right. was just brilliant. I loved that oh, yeah. because it brought home that Rex is going to do what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, he, in a fight for his life, he's going to, to mow down his buddies, you know, yeah. because there's no choice. He knows he was in their shoes a minute ago. He knows they're not going to stop. Right. But it is taking a toll. He's changed, you know, he's mm-hmm. changed forever. Um, it's bringing out emotions and stuff in him that if he's never had to probably deal with before, except from right. maybe fives, you know, exactly. <clears throat> So to, and, to uh, finish your to finish your thought, um, D. Bradley Baker is the voice of the Clone Wars, or, uh, the voice of the, the clones in the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he <laughs> yeah he did a phenomenal job on all that. <laughs> absolutely and uh th- that was just a well-written again subdued scene where they could have gone over the top yep but they, they didn't try to explain too much right they, 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 they kept a really good balance just right mm-hmm. it was, uh, absolutely absolutely cool all right well i think that's pretty much a wrap on uh season seven of the clone wars as well as a wrap on the clone wars as a series wow yeah so all right well uh, <laughs> unless you have anything else i think we're uh, we're good to go uh, no, I just want to say I'm looking forward to what's next because um, when Clone Wars came out, I pretty much ignored it. Uh, yeah, I, I hated uh, Attack of the Clones, and I still do. <laughs> it's my worst Star Wars movie of all time, yeah, still <laughs> to this day. So that put me off of pursuing these type of stories for a while. But um, in a way, I'm glad I got to go back and rediscover it and watch it all when it was, you know, all, mostly done. And mm-hmm. then, and then I got to enjoy this. Uh, resurgence with everyone else and yeah. grow to appreciate it and see what everybody sees in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it gives me hope that 
as long as some of these same people are involved at Lucasfilm, we will get things that we can, you know, enjoy. Um, mm -hmm. There's, it's hit and miss, you know, for every resistance, <laughs> there's, uh, you know, there's something else that I like. So yeah, yeah. Um, kind of like this season it's this you know we we have some episodes that are throwaway and we had ones that are brilliant so yeah. i'm just hanging on for some more brilliance and yeah this showed if nothing else that star wars is not dead absolutely it's, not. it's it's there it is there think, if you I, I wasn't thinking it, well, i wasn't thinking it was anyway i mean we've got mandalorian which clearly is 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 quality you know i think quality television and quality star wars storytelling uh, that's going strong. Uh, we've got the potential for more coming up with the uh, Cassian Andor series, the Obi Wan yeah. series, uh, and and more stuff moving forward from there. So, so yeah, I think I think the future is pretty bright over the next couple of years. We'll see uh, which direction Mandalorian goes. season two. All, right, all that's supposed stuff. to be coming up. Yeah. That's still t tentatively scheduled for a November release. So, that would be nice. I hope it happens. I look forward for those moments. The the great mm -hmm. moments are going to make it worthwhile for me. So I hope they continue to invest in people who are willing to bring us those great moments, not necessarily the big spectacle and the cash cow that Star Wars has become, but right. allow them to make the stories and characters breathe more, uh, mm -hmm. affect us more. Clone Wars took a lot of years and the support of movies and everything to get us to this moment where that final scene had so much impact. But frankly, uh, if I had never seen anything else except, you know, the, maybe the prequels or whatever, that scene would have been incredible and stood on its own. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Just, just because of the imagery, the the perfect tone, everything that went into it. And that's what we need from Star Wars going forward. Mm -hmm. We need quality, period. And not, yeah. and not just quality of visual effects because mm, right. we don't need Marvel movies that look like a cartoon. Clone Wars <laughs> looks less like a cartoon than, you know, <laughs> uh, Avengers Endgame, okay? Yeah. And uh, because it had humanity in it you know mm -hmm. so did avengers endgame but i shouldn't have kind of back slapped them <laughs> like that but that's what that's what i feel like we need going forward that's what i want that's what i want to see going forward and yeah. uh, that's what i hope that's what i'm hanging on for so yeah yeah all right well that's a wrap on clone wars guys glad you paid attention and uh, and and hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did um so just reach out to us make some comments below uh, on our youtube page and uh let us know what you thought and we'll be back again soon take care if guys. you know if you know what the bird was then you can explain it yeah yeah detail. if you know Please what the bird was down yeah, there. leave us a I comment down there something. so we can enlighten us <laughs> thanks guys we're still searching for a gun dark though yeah uh, i hear there was a disturbance in the force <laughs> that she may, he may be escaping from the prison Captivity. planet. <laughs> from the, <laughs> the academics. <laughs> <laughs> she may just have to snort some spice <laughs> and get going again. <laughs> All right. I'm Grado. He's Carillion. I'm a He's real out. traitor. <laughs> See you next time. See ya. <laughs> We're trying this Zoom thing that's so popular now. That's <laughs> popular with the kids these days. <laughs> Why don't you have room him? I thought you said this Zoom thing was not right. Hey, it ain't too dang fast, is it? All right. It's your mouth, traitor. Find yourself floating home. <laughs> <laughs>